Yo, so if you guys saw Friday's video, you know what we're dealing with over here. You see it in the background, and you already kind of know how I feel. But uh, we're going to talk about how I keep getting myself into these situations on this week's Tuesday Morning Tech Tip from Publicity Speech Act. Guys, I am going to try to be as polite as possible as I discuss working on this guy. So, 98 Eldorado, beautiful car. I mean, you guys have seen it around here a lot. Um, it was, let me tell you, an expensive car. Back in the day, in 1998, you can imagine this. Um, the... The window sticker. The kid still got the window sticker. Like I said, the original owner took amazing care of his car. $45,000 in 1998. Now you can pick one up for about three grand. Um, I might be able to make you a deal if you're interested. But, uh, you know, that's where they started out. And that's, guys, here's a little uh, little economics for you. You're going you're gonna to learn a lot this episode of Publicity Speech. We're going we're to speak some truth. If you want the worst thing you can do with your money is go out and buy a brand new Cadillac. As much as Italian guy from New York telling you this, <laughs> it's the truth, guys, because nothing depreciates faster. And, um, well, maybe a Lincoln? Well, you could say to me a Lincoln is better than I'm a Cadillac. I'm saying that a Lincoln is better than a Cadillac. It's a better automobile. Get about it. Cadillac got more acceleration. It's got more power, it's got better handling, it's got what? It's got more leg room for your legs, it's got more power. You just said that. Bingo. What I said? You just said that, more power. You start to repeat yourself. I said that. I don't know. Anyways, um, yeah, it's just, that's how it is. It's always been that way, and that's never going to change, right? It's also a bitch to work on. Everything, it's got the cutting edge. I mean, you got 98. It's got, you start it up, it's got the leveling system, it's got power, everything. So, cutting edge of all that stuff, which means it breaks quicker. Because they haven't done all the research, right? It's just, these are facts when you're buying cars. This is why Toyota has it figured out. Until the Tundra Motors, the new ones, they don't, they, they, they stopped using the formula that's worked for them since, like, the 70s, right? Um, don't go crazy with the options. Use everything that you know works. All the testing and development is done on it, and they'll run forever. We got a couple of them in the driveway that we know that's true, right? So, like I said, the new Tundras, I don't know what they did with those motors, but they had some issues. So, we're getting off topic. Not a big surprise, I'm sure. So, guys, I have done some of the things I've done on this car right here. Guys, this car. We're focusing on the wrong one here. Starter, under the intake. Had to take the top of the motor off to get to it. The alternator, um, there's a special place in hell for whoever located that thing where it's at. The brake line situation, that's been a bear. Um, sticking a V8 in sideways is never, it's never a solid plan. I'm going to tell you that right now. And uh, that caused... Some problems trying to figure out the cooling system, right? So it's, and you guys know there's a new motor in this thing for a reason, okay? Between 75 and 125,000 miles on an older North Star, you will blow a head gasket, guaranteed. Um, and when that happens, you can't just throw a new one on because the studs are all jacked, and then you need to you need to buy a jig. It's like a thousand bucks just for the tools to fix it, and then if it's the back one, you're pulling the motor. If it's the front one, you're gutting everything here. So, no matter what you do, you're working on it. And they're not designed to be worked on. None of the newer cars, now we all, we all know that. They're designed for basic maintenance, and um, well, that's about it. Everything else, you take it to the dealer, cover it under warranty until it's not, and then you pay through the nose, right? This thing, I'm going to show you a mod I had to do to this thing just so I could drain the radiator. So I could actually operate the petcock. Let me show you. 
There it is, guys. Right here is where the pet cock drains. There was just a hole right here. I had to elongate this, cut all this out, and then make a tool so I can get in there. You can actually see all the way up in there. So I get in there just to spin it. All right? Let me see. Let me a little, uh, there you go. You see that? I should not have to cut this cross member just so I can open it. But if you got a Cadillac, that's what you got to do. And guys, that's not the only thing like that. There's a bunch of stuff like that. I just, that's the easiest one to show you right now that I had to do to actually work on this thing. And like I started this video saying, how do I get myself into this stuff? There's a couple ways, and we all do it. I'm going to show you, well, the number one reason that uh, I got myself into this situation. The answer is right over here, guys. Let me know when you see it. See it yet? How about now? How about now? All right, guys. So I'm uh, I'm gonna start on a high note. All right, because this is gonna have the tendency to want to dip. So uh, the heat finally broke. Thank you. Thank you. It's like 70 degrees. There's like a slight breeze coming through. Nice, cool little. Beautiful. Absolutely awesome. Because you guys remember what the last Tuesday morning detective looked like. And, uh, well, let's just say I'm very glad. We're not reliving that. So, I ever so subtly panned in, right, on that, uh, that little paper towel holder over there that says Dad's Garage, right? That, as you guys know, well know, this is why I'm dealing with this thing. Um, you do things for your kids. It's just what you do. So um, it started before that, right? So my brother bought the car, and uh, right away I had a problem. You don't know what you don't know. I don't fault him for that. But um, I asked, hey, can you help me out? I said, yeah, let's get, you know, get after it. He brought it down on a Saturday. Spent the night, we worked on it Sunday, he went home, he was going to come back the next weekend, which he did, um, but he called me on Wednesday and said, hey, I, I bought a Jeep, so uh, we're going to fix that caddy and, and sell it. Okay. My brother's got the intent to spend a goldfish when it comes to cars, right? So this was the first of six, seven, and I'm not even kidding, <laughs> to the journey he's on now, but uh, everybody does their thing, guys, you know? What are you going to do? Everybody's got their thing. Um, I mean, clearly I'm not, I don't have much room to talk. I got a bunch of junk everywhere, right? And we'll get to that. So the kid did not like the idea of having a car at first. Um, he had a Jeep, had a problem with it. This was here. It bailed us out. He started driving it and fell in love with it. I mean, that's all that, that's, that's the short of it, right? We've had problems along the way. It's a 98 with 140,000 miles on it. And then you're going to have problems. It happens, right? Especially with a caddy. You know, that's just how that goes. Now, if you had, and I told him this, if you had like a, an Accord, a Civic, a Camry with that mileage on it, you might not, you might just keep doing oil changes and putting tires on it, get after it. But uh, you never know. You never know, guys. It's an older car. The machines, they break, right? So. I've gotten into the situation before where I put myself in it. Now, this one, yeah, different story. But you, you guys have seen around the shop. This doesn't happen overnight or on accident. Actually, I take that back. It can happen on accident because it kind of did. Every time I would get something, you know, I started off, I remember, got that one car, right? I had my first car. 77 Trans Am. Then my old man, hey, we're going to get you a Jeep for the winter. I was like, oh, we, we need more than one vehicle. Okay. Now I know. So, so we had a Jeep. And then um, it just, I always had, it seemed like I always had more than one vehicle. Um, I, actually, I left boot camp. I had one. And I traded, you know, it was a whole thing. So I always end up 
by it's, we all do it, guys. You know, what most people do, they get their car from like, you know your first car. It's usually an older car, you know, if it's something you bought yourself or whatever, uh, and it's you know, it ends up like down the road being a really cool car. Good example, my buddy Joe, he bought a 65 Mustang when we were in high school. I think he paid 1200 bucks for it. Six-cylinder automatic car, but clean, a lot of Bondo, but it looked good. That decent paint interior, drove it every day, loved it. Everybody in the school was like, man, look at this guy's car. Guys, I graduated in 1995. He actually graduated a year before me. He still got the car. Now, it's been in, I don't know how many different forms, right? But he kept that car. And he bought something else as a daily driver. And he just, he loved it. He never wanted to get rid of it. And I highly doubt he ever will, right? And it's, as a matter of fact, I'm 99% sure it's on a rotisserie, like right now in his garage, getting rebuilt again. So that's, that's the story you hear. And it's like unattainable, right? Like, wow, I can't believe you actually did that. For most people that are into cars, you know, you get into it. You know, you start working on cars, you had to. Most times, that's exactly it. You had to, right? Um, didn't have a lot of money. You're driving a shitbox. It breaks. Got to get to work or school or whatever you got going on at that time. So that's how that happens, right? And then you kind of enjoy yourself. You get that feeling of accomplishment. Um, in Joe's case, he had that cool car. And, uh, yeah, there it is. Most people end up off in that car, um, Buy something reliable, newer vehicle, get a loan, all that kind of crap. And then uh, what do they do? Down the road, they're like, I want a hot rod, I want a, car, I want a project, I want something, you know, because I'm a car guy, right? So they go out and they buy something else, and it's usually a project, you know, depending on your skill set. Hopefully, that's the number one thing you got to make sure you can, you're within your skill set uh, and your budget, which you're never in your budget. But, um, and get after it, right? And that's what I did. I went and bought my 53 Pontiac. I had, had a, the, I put on the channel before, the old, the first truck I actually built. And I was like, oh, that's cool, but I don't really like, I don't want many trucks. So the next thing I did was buy a Pontiac. And after that, guys, I re-enlisted, they gave me a bonus, and I had cash in my hand that I've never had before. <laughs> and I started buying cars. 53 Caddy, 52 Caddy, 64 Le Mans, 51 Dodge Truck, 52 Pontiac. I had something else in there at some point. I don't remember what the hell that even was. But either way, I got a bunch of stuff and I can't keep up, right? Well, I've learned my lesson. I offed a bunch of that stuff. And I was back to just my original Pontiac again. And this took some years to get to. And I'm working on that thing, right? I'm actually making some money on it when I was... Uh, out in California, and then I started buying more stuff. It's just my my maybe maybe my brother's not the only one that has a attention span of a goldfish when it comes to cars. I, he just does it with newer ones, and I do it with older ones. That might be a thing, but uh, so then I, I realize right. I'm, I'm gonna get this raveled in again. I get rid of everything, um, with the exception of my '53 Pontiac and my shovel head. And I said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to buy a truck that I can drive every day, an old vehicle. That's how I ended up with 65. And it was a solid plan until this son of a bitch in a Honda Odyssey drove into it. <sighs> but more to come. That story's not over. So I'm rambling. I get it. That happens. But uh, the thing is, you don't want your project car to be your daily driver because... It's just a bad friggin' idea. Um, you end up, you know, I mean, there are people that drive older cars as daily drivers, but they're not projects, right? They've restored them. Maybe they put a new drivetrain. I know that's something like Jay's looking at that kind of stuff, fuel injection and all this kind of stuff. And yeah, that might help. But uh, you don't want it to be that, you know, you shouldn't be, you should be getting your daily driver saying, man, I hope, it, I hope it gets me to work. You know, now sometimes you, you can't help that you're in that situation. But if you got more than one vehicle, you shouldn't be in that situation. So it happens. I've been there plenty of times. Um, as me and Megan were growing up, she always had a new reliable vehicle and I did not. Right. And that was by design because she had the kid and whatever. And 
you know, I was willing to take that burden. Well, after the truck got hit, and then I had this Jeep that I bought. I didn't even buy it. I traded it for a television, guys, so that could, should tell you the shape it was in, right? And then it broke down, and I'm trying to figure out a way to get something fixed real quick. And she's like, Jess, we're in our 40s. It's not cute anymore. <laughs> Noted. I went out and bought an F-150. It was five years old or whatever at the time. And it was a good idea. And then that had a problem, and I buy the Tundra. So it's like, okay, I learned. And I got this, right? I got a solid daily driver. She's got a solid daily driver. And then I got a bunch of crap. And because at the end of the day, when I can't drive, and that's what it is, guys. As much as I hate to say it, and my, you know, people might look at some of the stuff that's here and say, that's far from crap. Right. But the truth of the matter is, you would know how cool they are unless you watch the channel or come to the shop because they're not really going anywhere. And we need to change that. We do need to change that. And that's what I'm, believe it or not, I'm trying to work on. <laughs> All right. That was why I traded the 65C10 for the Suburban. And guys, that Suburban's probably going to come up for sale pretty soon because I'm still not in love with it. So, you know, door buster sales if you guys want to hit me up. But, uh, yeah, it's, uh, I, I wrote down, like I said, I, I do a list for everything. I wrote down that this was going to be work on what you love because it works, man. It absolutely works. I think Kevin's a great example of that. He, um, he does that. He is very disciplined as far as not in budget, okay? But he's like, I want to build this motorcycle. He got the FXR, and he had no other projects except that bike until it was done. And it took, he wanted to build in a year. I think it took him a year and a half, maybe two years. Either way, phenomenal. Way better than most people ever do, right? And then he's like, okay, I want to find another project. And now he found old Roy. And I know he's going to do the same thing he did with the FXR because that's just how he operates. I'm a little more all over the place. But I think we can find a happy medium. And we'll find that by working on what we love. If you guys, and I reference Dan a lot over DD Speed Shop, he just offed a whole bunch of cars. And he is making the ones he has the coolest things you've ever seen. Because they're the ones he loves. And he's got the time to just put on this. And, and you know, he's not putting his funds everywhere. He's focusing. We've talked about that in the past. So I think that's what we need to do here. We need to sit down and focus on what we love. You know, there's there's some stuff around here with sentimental value. There's some stuff around here that I just think is cool. There's some stuff I bought here because it was a good deal. <laughs> you know what I mean? So... Um, I was just talking with Oli about this. If you guys, I'm going to put him up here. If you guys aren't subscribed to him, check him out. He's got some super cool cars, even though most of them are Fords. I mean, what are you going to do, right? But um, we were talking about, he, he did a video showing all his stuff, and he's talking about the same type of thing. Like, man, what have I, I got to do something here, guys. So uh, I think I had a little, between watching Dan and then talking to Oli and just looking around here, and seeing everything that's going on, I should probably take a good solid look at what's up. And instead of, you know, having a hundred projects all over the place, maybe I should, uh, should focus and uh, work on the ones I love. Because when you do that too, you stay calmer, you don't get aggravated, you want to keep working on it. Whereas sometimes, it's not the case. I figured I'd take a little tour outside here and show you, you know, what we got, how we got it, and, um, you know, what we're going to do with it. This one right here, not mine. It's my buddy John's grandfather's truck. He's just parking it right here for right now, guys. So if I sold that, I think John would be pretty pissed. All right. My 53 Pontiac had this car since 2002, guys. Um, she's been in a bunch of different uh, configurations, I guess. This is by far its saddest state, and I feel absolutely terrible about it. Um, 
when we went and picked it up from my buddy Chip's house, I was looking at it and I was like, Man, I'm sorry, girl, you know? And um, Megan's like, I don't believe you. I was like, what? And she's like, you've screwed me over a couple times over the years. I said, I've apologized. She said, yeah, but never that sincerely. She's probably right. So I got a plan in my head, but this is, I was taking a look at her the other day and I, 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 it was killing me. So, um, yeah, it's kind of what's sparking some of this, you know, because guys, I clearly love this car because, um, right. I was actually at work the other day. A guy says, he's a grand national. Actually, you saw it on the channel, Doug's with his GNX. And he's like, I love that car. He's like, but man, I wouldn't, he saw somebody had a tattoo. And I was like, well, I can't say that. <laughs> right. Uh, the 46 back there is Jimbo's car. It was my buddy Casey bought it, gave it to Jimbo. Jimbo messed with it for a while. It's made its way here. And uh, we got some ideas for it. But uh, it's going to take some doing. We did get it running. We had that a, a video on that. That was pretty cool. But that's kind of back burner to a bunch of other things. These two cabs here I bought for like 500 bucks just because they were there. This one actually has a title. It's, it was a 48 Ford fire truck, like an F7. And I, I got some cool ideas for it. It can sit there forever. It's not going to get any worse. And, um, yeah. So that doesn't make any sense to get rid of it, right? It's not even in the way. It kind of looks cool. The Suburban, you guys know the story on it. Um, and I'm not kidding, guys. If you're interested, I got a couple more things to do to it. You see the parts in the shop. And then I think she's going to uh, take a trip. So, um, this makes sense. Like I said, I haven't fallen in love with it. Work on the ones you love with. Work on the ones you love. So, if you're interested, guys, you know everything about it. This is a kid's 64 Bel Air. We bought this for him for uh, his graduation from college. And I'll throw a couple pictures up. This one's not going anywhere, guys. We got a bunch of parts for it. That's actually what we're waiting on with this one. This one we've ordered. Try and do it right. Ordered a ton of parts. You've seen a ton of parts. The motor's getting built. Um, so this one is she's just resting for what's going to be super cool. So yeah, seventy-seven Le Mans. This one has fabricated sentimental value because it's the same car as my grandfather had but not his car um, i want to build it into his car it runs and drives awesome i've had it out quite a few times you guys have seen it a bunch on the channel i gutted it to fix the floors and had all these grand plans and life kind of happened and parts were harder to get and all these kind of things so she ain't going anywhere but uh in fact, I'll get in right now and turn that, that milk crate and fire it up, drive it somewhere. Probably not very safe, but we get her done. So, again, this is another one I have parts for everywhere. Um, I do need some, you see the quarter of the shot, floor pans, trunk pan. So, that's what we're looking at right now. And there are some back order stuff where you're messing with these old A bodies here. Sometimes I buy things because it's a good deal. That's this guy. It's a cool truck, slant six, short bed, three speed. Um, it's a little rusty, runs great, drives good. No brakes. So it needs some things. Honestly, if somebody threw me a stupid offer on it, I'd probably just, you know, I got a title and stuff. But I do, this is where I'm at, guys. I like it. It's a cool little truck. I don't know. Maybe you can help me help myself. Uh, shovel head. Where's she going? Nowhere. And that's actually a factor that's been on a been on the lift for a couple of years. Need to get after that. I want to do it this winter. Uh, FXR needs a battery, so that's it's actually over there. It's just covered up because of uh, we're doing some work. Yeah, that's not going. This again, not mine. Um, it's Scotty's and Scotty. We gotta get this done for you. And that's another reason that we're looking at uh, punting a couple things because I've been sitting here too long, dude, and um, 
I owe it to you to knock it out. This guy over here, I keep telling you to stay tuned. Stay tuned, guys, because she ain't going anywhere. And we got some boxes starting to accumulate. And we, uh, yeah. I think you're going to like that. So, this is probably the world's longest Tuesday morning tech tip. We've talked about this one. Um, what do you guys think? If you got, I mean, you're not going to hurt my feelings. I think you have to have feelings for them to get hurt. Somebody told me that. But, uh, yeah, let me know what you think. Oh, we got the Jeep up there, too. It's up at the house, but that's the, the kids' daily right now. That's not going anywhere. We've had, like, seven years. It's been a freaking godsend. I love that thing. And, actually, we need to give that thing some love because she's been road hard and put away wet, as they say. So we need to, um, yeah. We catch up on some things. That's going to come in here, and I think that's going to be a really cool build. And it's... Guys, this is like a sickness, man. It's like, I'm not even kidding. Because I showed you all this stuff, all this stuff needs something. And you know what I was just doing? I was looking at Facebook Marketplace at Square Body Chevy pickups. <laughs> what the hell is wrong with me? Maybe you guys can help me out. Thanks for watching, guys.